The following is a paid program. The content is provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership are not responsible for the content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. And now the host of the Team Martech Hour, Joe Martech. Hey, guess what? We are live. We are on the radio. It's the Team Martech Hour, and I am here, as in Joe Martech. <laughs> You're here live. Hey, yeah, uh, it's a uh, it was an interesting last weekend, and we were talking a little politics er- earlier, and I was a bit disappointed in our head of the country backing down from his opinion on what you know you know you know what i get alan this is this is joe martek speaking now anybody out there that disagrees i'd love to hear from you on the radio because i absolutely don't know that much about anything but i have an opinion and one of the things that happens is you notice they're lambasting in this guy like crazy because he's talking to Putin, but obviously nobody else has ever talked to Putin. They don't want to talk to him because he's a tyrant and he's a but bad guy. But they did. But they did. We had Obama on tape where he had open mics and he didn't know it going, oh, just wait until I'm, I'm president again. But, I but, mean, but they were supposed to treat him like a second or third class citizen, right? That's what we're supposed to do because he's a killer and he's all this and but he's see, all that. But see, that was Putin's complaint, too, I know, I know. is that the world is treating russia like garbage i know but here comes my other side before before you rudely interrupted i'm sorry me. no you're not <laughs> <laughs> anyway if you noticed we haven't heard anything about north korea That's i mean they were mad at him for going to north korea right but it's just the rant of the day i know now all of a sudden we have the new rant uh-huh. which we can bypass the north korea thing because that appears to be working maybe they'll dig that up next week you know well it what they want to you know don't you love this the liberals want it not to work they don't want Trump anything to, they don't want him they, to succeed nothing. period no matter what he does don't succeed and all the good he's accomplishing i was listening to CNBC on the way up, and Larry Kudlow was on, and he's now the you know new head of commerce or whatever he is. Economic. Economics. Uh, thank chief you. Chief economic. Close. Advisor. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's got to keep me straight. And and he was saying, you know, a year ago or two years ago, everybody said the new economy was never going to be better than two percent, and then Trump gets in and says, oh, it'll be better than three, and they said, ha, huh, you crazy man. And now it's three, and it's approaching four, and we might have a 4% quarter here eminently. And it was called, and get out of the way. And he went back through saying that the millennials have never seen a good economy. Well, they were children. They were children. They didn't know. You know, the 80s, 90s, there were some good stretches, but they weren't there and right. doing and, yeah. so now they're saying that this quote recovery that is nine long, nine years long this may not be the recovery this is to get us back up to speed and the recovery might now start with this new quote three and four and maybe five percent growth because how can russia have seven eight or china can have seven eight nine ten percent gdp they get all our money point is <laughs> The man is doing a job and a half, and I just was a bit disappointed that he backed down because he spent two and a half, oh, behind closed doors with only interpreters. I mean, why would he do that? He's hiding something. I mean, Lord, save me. The fact that he sat down with another world leader for two and a half hours and made some progress rather than no progress, I think is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He's done it with China. He's done it with North Korea. Were you disappointed with his answers or disappointed with the questions that the press asked? Well, I was – no, I expect the press to dislike everything. Because I would have liked a little bit more on the whole nuclear thing than the collusion thing. Of course. The key was, I'm sure his, quote, advisors, because now he's reading from prepared text, because the man shoots from the hip, from the heart. Mm-hmm. He doesn't filter. He, he'd speak in his mind. Mm-hmm. And that's worked phenomenally well. But as soon as it's scripted by other people, because he's supposed to now start getting politically correct, 
And I, and I hope he just doesn't get into the political. Well, he had to moment. be a little guarded, and that had to be controlled that way because he was with another leader, yeah. uh, you know, and it's Putin. So, Which, by the way, today, um, the EU, Japan, I, I forget what it was, they're now going to eliminate trade barriers between those countries. Coincidentally, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. just, just yeah. coincidentally these things are starting to happen. And uh, according to um, Cudlow today, it looks like Mexico has, is eliminating. It's not in concrete yet. But point is, things are all happening uh, that this guy is making happen. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some farmers upset right now because um, Russia's not, evidently not buying or China's not buying soybeans for a while. But uh, Do we not need soybeans in this country? Evidently not enough. Mm. Evidently not okay. enough. Because uh, the... the they're selling for a price below. I mean, we of, are the consumer. Oh, yeah. So Biggest one in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just had to vent a little bit. I figured while I was here, I am Joe Martek. I am Team Martek without a team. Oh, no team today. But I've got a special guest team member who is not an official team member, but he's a he's here more than any other team member except me. He's the team mascot. Team. <laughs> 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 My messy Jew. <laughs> You know, you know he's a messy Jew. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, good. <laughs> good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Love, retired prosecuting attorney from the great state of Wisconsin. Um, and Alan is, is, is a good tormentor in that we get into conversations. And, hey, speaking of Miss Victoria Lloyd. See, just when you needed a team member. You, yeah, I, I needed, we needed a legitimate push him out of the way. No, <laughs> Yeah, well, you can't get you can't you can't get me too far out because Cliff gets upset because if I'm he's not, not in, in the, the picture, shot. so you've got to cuddle up to Alan. Don't quit I'll quit cuddling to... up to me, Vic. I'm tired. Oh, of I'm that. so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> too many years. I'm wearing off on him. We, we only go back to 1980, so you know. Let's keep this show PG. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> PG. I thought we were always at least PG. Yeah, that's perfect and good. I said Very let's, good. Perfect. Let's, and... let's keep it PG. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, back in Ott Ford, Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, Greg Fasula, attorney, and Joe Martek, financial advisor, said, let's start doing radio shows so we can educate the public on subjects that we individually are expert in, but not as a group. And it's worked extremely well. And then over a period of time, Ms. Victoria Lloyd, Remax of Stewart, was invited into the group because she's been in real estate continuously since 1978 it's scary isn't it where did the time for go? somebody that's only 30 it's, that's, a, it's a miracle right i, I have miracles every day <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> and which brought in mike Pollis, mortgage broker who's hand in glove with what's going on with Ms. victoria lloyd and especially during the height of the recession when the world was coming to an end supposedly and a lot of stuff was not true that was being publicized but uh, hey between you and mike we educated a whole bunch of people on what was real and we still are educating yeah. i mean it's kind of it's kind of scary i mean he's working on somebody that called me last night you know about one of my properties i have and she's a first-time home buyer but they don't they don't know where to start yep. at all they yep. they don't have a clue they know that they want to move forward they know they want to buy something but they have no no idea on how to do it so mike is helping her they're in for time. an education too because buying a house isn't like going to the store and buying no. you know picking up some you know well you know what it, it, but it's changing soda. every day too yeah. how people want and what they're looking for and how they'll present offers it's mm -hmm. all changing well you know literally because we've been doing it for years and years and years and years all, everything's easy once you know it mm -hmm. right it's the learning process that takes forever like obviously back when we were in real estate in, this, in the late 70s and early 80s um i think you might know a hair more today than you knew back then no you, no we knew a lot back then <laughs> you but know, there wasn't as much to know joe yeah that helped that's you. the difference you know joe uh, one of the things that's much easier than buying a house is using a telephone 340-1590 if you'd like to Give us a call. This is an audience participation talk show, so please. Yeah, and even Bulldog zero. didn't call last week. I don't know what's wrong with Bulldog. I mean, in fact, I was going to call him on the way over, and I couldn't because I was on the phone the whole You're time. The I was going to call him to tell him. But I like our new little covers here. Aren't they cute? This is lovely. I got yellow and green. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. We got three different. Why do we Thank have three different colors? Mr. They... G brought them in. 
That's fabulous. Okay. Yeah. Gifts. Gift. Yes. 340 1590. 1590. So the concept of the group was very simple. Everybody's here to help save people money, and I'm here to make people money. And I mean, and it's worked extremely well educating people over the years. So we look for information. And you know, Vic, it's, it's when you talk about a first time home buyer who we had. Uh, a lady called in a few weeks ago and, and just praised Mike upside and one down the other Aww. because her son was buying a house for the first time. And uh-huh. what Mike did to educate him on what it takes to qualify for a mortgage and how much you can get. And Mike does that so fast. You know, he doesn't take two weeks to do it. He does oh, no. it at so most quickly. 15 minutes to a half an hour. People know where they stand. If that. Uh-huh. Yeah, if that. And, it, you know, it's it just it's the right way to do things. Absolutely. That's why I just texted him. I said, are you working on my two deals? <laughs> <laughs> Give me answers. 340-1590. <laughs> so you don't look like you're very tan. You haven't been out in the sun much. I'm just my natural color. I know, but I, I'm a little darker no. than you. No, yeah. different shade of dark. Different shade of dark. I'm an olive dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was spent my two weeks in the Bahamas. Well, see, that's it. I haven't had that pleasure. Yes, well, hey, you, but you, you. After all these years, you've never even invited me on any of his boats. He'd always say, "Hey, Vic, you stay there and you work, and I'll be back." And I yeah, go, but oh, every yeah, time great. I invite you any place, you say, "Wait a minute, a client called, and I've got to go." Goodbye. That's true too. Absolutely. My husband gets tired of that too. Three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety. So, other than that. <clears throat> Real estate market is pretty hot right now. It is. It's a different market. And we were talking about that. And I was talking about this with, with somebody that's in the retail business. And it's furniture and it's patios, things of that sort. And people, come. they are coming in. They're looking. But not everybody makes a quick decision. And if your property just doesn't fit their needs the way they want to, they're not... People aren't looking to make those renovations right now. People are looking for that perfect property that they want. And and if not, they're just not willing to negotiate. So if it's not priced right... So they have no vision of their own. Uh, well, it's not... It's true. A lot of people do not have a vision. Uh, there are people that do. They can go in and see, see what it, it could mm-hmm. be. And what it could be and those potentials. And a lot of people put put it you know like an age like how old your home is and mm-hmm. where a, a home i could take these people into that are newer and i could take them into a 30 year old home that looks like it's in better shape than it is that one and and the other thing is square footage some people say in their mind oh i want at least 2000 square feet well i can take them in a 1700 that's nicer than the 2000 yep, square yep, feet yep. so and you're not going to really see that that much difference is in between 17 something and 2000 well it depends, depends on the floor plan. it really can the floor plan like joe says i have been in homes that were 1500 square feet that were bigger than my 2000 yeah. because of the way they laid it open out and how they plans, yes right? it makes a big difference so i wish people would be a little more open minded to these things and so the retail business is the same thing they're looking and they're coming in and even though that the prices have been discounted not all people are jumping onto it and purchasing it like they used to a lot used to. of they're, new construction going on well there is a lot of new construction and a lot of people are looking for more of that that straight line modern look Mm -hmm. now they don't want to have all those curves and all those changes that they had so that's the other thing that we're running into well interest rates are still exceptionally good absolutely i mean that just amazes me still under five percent yeah that just amazes me it's lasting this long you know because well back back when we were in real estate hot and heavy when interest rates were 16 and 17 percent we used to beg if we could ever get it down to 10 we'd be rich yeah (laughs) you know remember those days it was just just in a, a hey but things change but literally uh, it's it's an opportunity for people like crazy still um, to get into real estate that's because of interest rates well the thing of it is is people don't they don't like the other thing is is people put um, a price range you go like let's say they get pre-qualified for more money but they go I don't want to spend that amount of money mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. if you find a nicer home and a better home and even if it's fifty thousand dollars more if you look at that let's say it's five dollars you know, you're paying just a little $250 more that will make a difference and you can have a home of your dreams instead of fighting it. Because if you have to put money in to remodel it anyway, you're better off getting exactly what you want. 340-1590, Anybody? Nobody wants to watch. What's at me happening for? with you, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> what am I looking at? I love this. Art. Look because because it's really hard to keep you quiet. That was just like an opener. Hey, to... you guys don't need me. <laughs> yeah, right. She said we that. always need you. We always You're need the best. 
340-1590. Hey, Bulldog, where are you? Martex in a mood. I, I have a subject that I want to get into, but I don't want to get into it too soon as, we, as we're moving along. Alan was uh, um, coming in here today, and he was watching a, a baseball game. Well, the All-Star game last night. Huh? The All Star game All-Star. last night, but we have a call, Joe. I we, believe. Hey, it's Mike Powers. Hi, Tana. Oh. Hey, McGraw. Hold on, Mike. No, 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 not yet. You guys can't I, I can't get them yet. Yeah, just wait, Mike. We'll I gotta, I gotta wait for everybody. You know, you know, headphones are at the at a premium here. You know, I think they rent them by the hour. And, hey, Mike. And, and we didn't pay yet, so, Mike, you're on the radio. Not until I push the button. Not, you know, Mike. <laughs> you guys are ruining we, we, the radio magic We need magic a new producer here, here that, could, that knows how to operate it's buttons. It's like radio No, she magic. knows how to push buttons. You know how to I push. Hear you, now. you wait yeah. for your cue. Wait for my That's cue. Right. Wait a minute. Cliff what? says, wait for your cue. What? Who did you? You've never given me a Q. I'm You've given me a, a, a G right and now. an L and a P, Mike, but never there? a Q. Her give you a finger once Mike, in a while. She has given me the finger once in a while. That's for sure. Say, Mike, what's happening good? Oh, I was listening to the show here at the office, and I figured I'd call in. Yeah, and you were talking about interest rates. They are still fabulous. It uh, doesn't Nothing. seem like the uh, the Fed increases has really affected us Nothing. all that much. No, it's amazing, isn't it? They were talking about the, uh, you know, we, what happens is we're into a pretty boring, wonderful time right now, and they're kind of like slow news days that uh, the CNBC, et cetera, is looking for something that's a problem, and there is no problem, and they're – how the interest rate spreads between the 2 and the 10 and the 30 and all kinds of stuff, and they're looking for trends that might look to have something bad, and nobody can find one. Yeah, and, and actually, we, were, we, on the, we base our interest rates on the 10-year T-bill, as you right, know, Joe. Right, And we, um, we were tinkering with that 3% range for a while, and that was driving up the mortgage interest rates for a little while, but we're back down to 28 um, so that's driven the rates down. We have a little bit of a lull here, so it's a great opportunity oh. for our listeners if you're going to refinance or if you're going to, um, uh, you know, purchase a property. It's a great time to lock in an I'm, interest rate. I'm telling you, it, it, it might be the last chance to, well, to lock you in know, a really I, attractive rate. I, with the Fed, I don't know if you listened to the Fed yesterday, the the chairman of the Fed, but uh, he first he's this guy speaks English and he's easy to follow, and. It looks as though he's not real anxious to keep raising interest rates. Mm-hmm. He's very content with where we are. Uh, and he expects things to continue along for a good period of time, which then brought me into Larry Kudlow on CNBC this morning. And we're into this 3% GDP. And we well, might. He's talking 4%. Possibly. Yeah, which was, was, which is, and you know, I, I, and I don't know, we were talking before the show and a little bit before that our, our, our fearless leader, he's been a little bit maligned. Can you imagine people talking bad about him, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I'm thinking, Lord, save me. We're into probably the best economy in 50 years. He's got this thing with, and, and I love him. They're picking on him unmercifully about Russia, but they've all of a sudden forgot about picking on him about what he did for North Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, Stormy who? Yep. Stormy, who? Yeah, she got arrested the other day, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. good. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, well, what, what I find interesting with the Fed, though, is that um, they're now looking at other. Like, if you look at the EU, they're still in QE. They're still yeah, easing. Yeah, yeah. You know, where we're looking to uh, increase our rates, and and there's really limited things you can do when, when other parts of the world are still easing interest rates. Uh, you can't price this out of the market either. So I think that lower rates are here for a little while anyway. Well, the, um, like you said, with with you take the whole, not only the EU, but the rest of the free world pretty much, they're not in the same position we are because they don't have the same leader making things happen. They're in business as usual. Yes. Um, and and sure. it's, hey, did you see today that uh, Japan and the EU and I figure how many countries they're eliminating tariffs? And that's, well, I wonder what instigated that. Can you imagine that? I mean, what, when, it's just, just what, a, what, a, what an amazing thing. And then one of the naysayers came on and he says, see, th- that had nothing to do with Trump, and he's causing nothing but troubles. And then I forget who it was, said, uh-huh. You know? Well, you know, Trump is a free trader, yeah, I mean, regardless yeah. of what he's doing with these tariffs. I mean, he, the purpose of the tariffs is to try to get everybody to reduce or even eliminate tariffs. Absolutely. Absolutely. So 
Mexico was the next one that said it's on the one-yard line right now that that's going to happen imminently. And, you know, if that happens, then the house of cards will start to crumble. So it's all, all good news. Yeah. All good news. Anyway, it's very exciting times for us believers. <laughs> 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 and and I hope the boy doesn't get discouraged by um, our CIA and no. and FBI being the experts they are. <laughs> he won't be discouraged. Yeah. I don't think he'll he'll be discouraged by anything. Yeah. Well, I just you know, was, it, I, I was a bit discouraged I, that he was reading from prepared text rather than shooting from the hip. The other, yes, this morning. Anyway, Mike, you're right. Everything is good, my man. Yes, uh, you know, I, I wanted to just touch on a, a couple of new products that we have. Um, you know, some of these limited income verification loans are back, as we discussed before. Right. But I have a, a real interesting program. It's it only requires a, um, a a either an accountant or a tax preparer uh, profit and loss statement, and that's what we would use for income. So if you are self-employed, you have a difficult time verifying your income because maybe you have some write-offs that you know, reduce your taxable income, we can use a prepared profit and loss statement to verify your income and get a, a mortgage that's, that's actually priced pretty well. I mean, obviously, you're going to be paying a little bit more for that type of product, but it's not that bad. You're probably looking in the mid-sixes for someone pretty well qualified. Can they get PMI with those, or are they all 20% No, down? no, that does require a little larger down payment. You have to have some skin in the game for those types of loan programs. Okay. But I do have programs where we can look at 12 months' worth of bank statements if you're self-employed, and if your credit is pretty decent, we can do that with as little as 10% down. There you go. And that would not have PMI on it. Now, the interest rate's a bit higher, but there's no prepayment penalty on it. So, we went so what's a bit higher mean? Yeah, you're probably looking again in the in the mid to upper sixes again, depending on your okay. credit score. Yeah. So rather than five, rather than five or a high yeah, fours. Well, I think if if you're fully documenting your income and you're very well qualified, it's just like Victoria said. You're probably in the in the upper fours, little under five. So you're paying about a percent, percent and a half for this type of program, but. Most people use these types of programs as bridge financing until you are able to qualify for a more traditional bank loan. On the other hand, if you can get a five and a half, six, six and a half now, and all of a sudden interest rates go up two years from now to seven, eight, or nine, which that's not a bad rate, though. No, you, and you can lock it in. I mean, you might be just happy as a pig in a slop there for a good while. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I good would, timing. Listen, Mike. You've been around for a long, long time, as as I have and Victoria has. And boy, Not as I long as take, you, though, Joe. I, nobody's. <laughs> hey, listen, I died five years ago. Nobody noticed. The key, <laughs> the key that 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 it is. You know, seven percent to me is still unbelievable. And here we have these fours and fives, and people are starting to complain. I said, man. You you just you just haven't lived long enough to understand what real interest rates are, <laughs> and, and that's the truth. Yeah, uh, I told somebody the other day because they were younger and there was a realtor, and, and I said, "Oh, I'm so sorry you missed those times. I really feel bad <laughs> <Yeah>. for you." <laughs> well, you know, if when when people used to try to like, I remember back when we were doing a project in Orlando and interest rates were 16 percent, we sold every unit nine times because people couldn't qualify for the loans. Right. You know, it was it was just just the way it was. Today qualifications are getting better and better and mike the new programs are coming out and that's just a sign of the times when the economy keeps getting better lenders um yeah uh, and, and, our, and you know so you know, you, we we know that there's a reason why interest rates go up and that's because the economy's heating up and prices are going up so you know if you if you have to take this type of loan or let's say it's a uh, let's say it's a seven percent loan yeah uh, it gets you in the door, but if property values are going up 10%, yep. think about that savings that you're that uh, bam, you all of a sudden now right, by right. buying at a lower rate today versus buying in the future at 10 to 20% higher. All good news, my man. Good. Get to work, Mike. You got some get, deals get you got to work, work on. Yeah. You can't be talking <laughs> on the radio all day long. You're not making any money. <laughs> yes, great show today. Hey, Mike, are you coming at 4 o'clock? Uh, yes, I do. I, I'm planning on being there. Good man. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety. So anyway, I was starting to allude to your story in Wisconsin um, about Cheese country about the young man who screwed up when he was seventeen and said some bad things and 
and uh, by, he tweeted. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about Josh Hader, the Milwaukee Brewer pitcher who uh, in the All-Star game last night uh, gave up a three-run homer. So that uh, didn't – I wasn't pleased to see that. But what happened during the game – is it was uncovered that when Josh Hader, six years ago, when he was 17, had a series of tweets that used the F word, the N word, and uh, it, uh, you know, obviously was the talk of the media after the game. Sure. And jo Josh Hader apologized for it, uh, and uh, Lorenzo Kane, the veteran center fielder that the Brewers traded for, they had him originally as a rookie, and then uh, he went to Kansas City, I believe, and then came back to the Milwaukee Brewers. Lorenzo Kane said he was young, he's, on, he's, on, he's got his back, uh, so Lorenzo Kane is a, is a black uh, player. Right. Uh, but the discussion we were having is, how, how does the audience feel about this? Should he have more of a penalty than just an apology? Uh, as Veronica mentioned, look what happened to Roseanne. Roseanne, yeah. She, uh, she tweeted also. So, you know, my emotion originally was he should be suspended for the rest of the season to really send a message. But after reading what Lorenzo Cain's reaction was sure. and other reactions, maybe I'm a little overboard on that. But, you know... Does a 17-year-old get a pass? The only thing I'm thinking about is six years ago, people weren't as aware as they are today that what they put out on the Internet or out on a tweet is going to go all over the world and stay there. Well, you know, one of my least favorite statements is, quote, man is known by his words. Well, I mean, that's that's how you're rated. Everything in the world is based on what you say and what you, you know. It's not necessarily what you do. It's what you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that stays with you forever. That stays you know? with you forever. So these words are documented someplace no matter what. And here's a kid that, that said, said some things he should never yeah. have said. But worse than that is he documented it. Backlash, too, probably also depends on who you're working for. I yeah. mean, Roseanne yeah. was working for what? what? Was that ABC? Yeah. Whatever network. Disney. Yeah. Disney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... They were a little more upset about it than maybe the brew crew. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, people, back again, people are known by their words. And if you're dumb enough to, and when I look at an adult, I, mean, I, I can give a kid 17 a pass somewhat, but I'm having a real hard time giving a full-grown adult a pass by saying something stupid. And then even more important, I mean, who doesn't say something stupid? Documenting it. Oh, like it, Peter Strzok? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bad tweets? Doc documenting it. I mean, boy, talk about Ooh. a guy. Yeah, and here's here's and here's a college educated attorney FBI, <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow. man, how dumb can you be? Mm -hmm. Well, and I know when I go to text on my phone. Now, you know, I'm just a dummy, and I don't text, as you know, and do a. I text, but I don't do a lot of Facebook or any of those things, and so I go to text something, and it changes it before it goes out. It corrects it for you. Yes, and it's not the to, right thing. You have to look at it yeah, before you send it. Mine, mine <laughs> but I do look yeah. at it. But as I'm sending it, it's like it's changing a word. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh, that's pretty scary. Well, do you type text or do you talk text? I, I type. See, I talk. You have to text. be careful with talk text, though, because it, it, it will it, really it, correct. It really for you. changes yeah. words. You know, does it really? Oh, oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. I mean, yeah, some words. In fact, I've texted back said it was supposed to say this word instead of that yeah, word because it, it made it no you, sense. It heard you weird. It hurt, well, yeah. <laughs> I was putting on, "Are you home yet?" Home, and it kept saying, "Are you horny yet?" <laughs> and I kept trying to correct it. I'm serious. And it, every time I tried to correct it, like, oh, my God, they're going to think I'm crazy. But, you know, but then it came but it up kept... with, okay, are you passionate? <laughs> <laughs> that person said, I was wondering what you were doing. And it really wasn't me. So I tell people if a crazy text comes through, it's not me. It's not me. Right? It's not me. Nick, I've known you forever. It was you. <laughs> it wasn't me. 340 no. 1590. Okay, I, I got a soapbox other than politics that uh, um, I've already got on that a little bit. I mean, I am so unbelievably impressed with what our president is doing. I just am beside myself. I'm disappointed that he backed down a bit on this Russia thing because here's uh, he's meeting people from all over the globe. He's talking exactly what he feels, what he says, what he means. Um, 
and he's accomplishing more than probably anybody has in, in modern history, and yet um, he's going to have more criticism, I guess, because he's accomplishing too much stuff. No, it's because who he is. Because he's who? He wasn't supposed to win. That's it. That's yeah. it. And people don't like people that are that will just go out and do something either. You yeah. know, they I always say, like, your parents have let you get away with murder all your life, and then all of a sudden somebody tries to discipline you, and you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. You know, because all these years you've been able to do anything you want to do, and nobody has said no or slapped your hand. Okay, so that it, would be called they, spoiled. Uh, yes, that's a good word. Okay. Can, can you believe <laughs> I'll that? I'll look that one up. On look my that phone. one up on see if you can Twitter. <laughs> see how that one comes out. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, this this happens regularly. Uh, I watch the tube and commercials, and. I, I've lately been seeing a few commercials on the tube where people are selling annuities. They're not saying they're, they're, they're annuity contracts. And, and I've said this a hundred times. If you are registered to sell securities, you're a stockbroker, a financial advisor. Now, a financial advisor, you don't even have to have a license to be a financial advisor. That's just a, it's a name brand that has got nothing to do with anything. But if you are securities licensed, meaning you're a stockbroker, meaning you can sell securities. Now, there's different levels of securities licenses, but as soon as you have such a thing, you now have compliance and you have scrutiny over everything you say and do. Is that what you call fiduciary responsibility? There is a fiduciary responsibility, but more important than even that is you can't say certain things. You can't just can't say mm -hmm. them. And if you do, you can be in trouble. Now, what happens is if I want to do a TV commercial, I have to get every word of it approved by compliance officers mm -hmm. before I can run the commercial. If I do a commercial or a radio show or an ad during or before and after that, there will be a disclaimer at the bottom saying, hey, security is offered through my broker-dealer. And, and if you listen to this show, at the beginning of the show, we have a, a, a lead-in that tells mm -hmm. you, hey, I'm a stockbroker, a financial advisor, securities are subject to this and that. There's all kinds of words that have to come out. But if I am not a securities agent, there is no compliance. I can say whatever I want. I can have a slick, slick commercial on TV. Um, and I can say whatever I want. So I've been watching some of these things, and then they're having testimonials where people say they're earning this much money in interest, and nobody is telling the whole story, and it just kind of worries me because I know that this, this one on particular shows 100 old people my age, you know, all sitting in the audience, and this guy's... I know which one you mean, yeah. He's real slick. He's got a good-looking suit on, and he looks mm -hmm. and sounds intelligent. It's seminar-like. Seminar. Yeah, like yeah. if they're having and a seminar. What he's trying to do is to say to people, hey, this is a safe investment. You can't go down. And he's got people coming up saying they're averaging 5% per year interest. Well, what they're not telling you is all the whole story. Can you collect that money monthly? I've never heard one of them say you can collect it monthly. Can you collect it at all? How long a period do you have to hold it before you can collect it? Can you cash it in without a penalty? All kinds of words are not being told. Every time I see certain products out there and I talk to a client and they have certain thing, they tell me about it, and they say, Joe, what do you think? And I said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to call up the insurance company that is the company that you got this product from, and I'm going to ask the questions, and you're going to be here listening, and when I'm all done, you're going to throw up. Because what you think you've got, you don't have. So I'm just trying to tell people, you just got to be a bit careful. And, and, and I, I, I know there's many people out there that mislead people. That Vic, we've been going through this our whole lives. Um, and, and one of your sayings that is, comes back to haunt me constantly, and that is, quote, all realtors are not created equal. Absolutely. Some people work, some don't. Some lie, some don't. Some cheat, some don't. How can you tell the difference? It's tough. It's really tough. But when you find a person that's been around for 10 and 20 and 30 years in the same location, it kind of is a clue. Because usually people that are, um, let's say, not totally honest, they come and go. Absolutely. And when I see these guys on the tube for a period of time, and then they're gone. And I have seen guys on the radio, and then they're gone. Yeah, but uh, the sad part is people get lose money. And yeah. they get 
they take advantage of these well, people. They're taking and, that, and that's so sad. And I see that all the time, yeah. mm-hmm. especially with the people at a certain age group. Oh, big time. And they have a hard time saying no, and it sounds so good to them. Well, and, and I've had people, once they get the thing, they'll say, well, gee, it's not that much money, so if it doesn't do what, I, what they told me, it's not that big a deal. I said, wait a minute, that's twenty or thirty or $50,000. You know how long it takes to save that much money? You can earn it. But to save that much is tough. Yeah, it is. So I wanted to do a little bit of education today on the different types of annuities. Now, even Alan Love, retired prosecuting attorney from the great state of Wisconsin, has learned a bit about these different products by listening to Joe Martek. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. I was kind of soliciting there for for a a little (laughs) bit of praise, and it worked. There's no sign saying no soliciting in the studio. There is when you enter the Okay, building, that's but it. But uh, once we're in here, we're okay, right? right. So what, let's talk about the very first type of annuity and why do we have such a thing. Well, number one, if we get an annuity, um, they're usually tax-deferred, meaning I don't have any taxes until I take money out. When I take money out, it's ordinary income tax, no other form of tax. If I get sued, it can't be taken away from me. And last but not least, it's not subject to probate. So I die, it doesn't have to go through the court systems. There's named beneficiaries. So if you just take those four things, that basically covers all annuity contracts. So let's take the one that is probably the oldest and most common, and that's called an immediate annuity. I oftentimes call it a pension. You come in, mint client, with 50, 100, 200,000, makes no difference how much money, and you give it to the insurance company. The insurance company says, okay, we're going to give you a check now every month for the rest of your life. Every month for the rest of your life. And there are wrinkles that you can add to that. Like if you retire from a company and they have a pension, and you get your pension, and one month you die, after one month, you may lose the entire pension unless you took a wrinkle that says, if I die, my wife gets a pension, then the check would be a little less because it's based on two lives rather than one. Well, the insurance company does the same thing. They may also say, not only can you get a check every month for the rest of your life, but we'll put in a minimum guarantee of, say, 10 years or 15 or 20 so that no matter what, if you died in one month, one year, or two years, somebody would keep getting that check for at least that 10, 15, or 20 years. That's called, in the business, it's called life in 10, and I don't know where they come and, but that's what it's called, life in 10, 10, 20, 15, 30. Got a client of mine right now that's 90-some years old that has beat the system because we got life in 10 when he was 70. That means it was guaranteed till 80, and now he's 90. So listen, he has beat the system like crazy, which I'm happy for him. Mm-hmm. You know, insurance. Joe, I have a clarification question. Uh, you said you get a monthly income mm-hmm. with the immediate annuity. Mm-hmm. Is that equal to a fixed annuity? Is it a percentage that uh, is fixed for the uh, term of the uh, of the annuity? No. What happens is it's an exact same amount of money every month. There's no difference. It okay. will stay exactly the same. Now, there are wrinkles you can get. Well, isn't, isn't that equal to, isn't a fixed annuity the same thing as far as? Well, a fixed annuity, no. Let's go into that next. Okay. I'll go to that next. Okay. But the immediate annuity is a pension. Just leave it there as a pension. Okay. And I can get no different than retiring from General Motors or anybody. There's five or six or seven or eight or nine different options for collecting that money. The more options you put into the equation, usually the less money you get every month. I had a lady, she uh, had $100,000, she was 80 years old, she said, I want to check every month for the rest of my life, and I said, okay, but if we add 10 years to it, or add a beneficiary, you'll get a little bit less, but somebody else would get money. She goes, I don't want anybody getting one dime. Most people say that anymore. She wants her money, nobody else to get it. Well, they gave her a very high check because if she died in one month or two months, nope, it was gone. So they give her a much higher number. It's going to be based on her guess. Why would she make that investment? Well, how does that investment help her then? Well, she gets. Why doesn't she of, just spend her hundred thousand a month? She gets two thousand a month. Yeah, it's okay. income. So her higher income now, but she also did not want literally anybody getting a nickel out of her estate because she disliked everybody. She just didn't care about anybody. 
I mean, it's like you and your sister. Come on. <laughs> yeah, she can get in a penny. <laughs> okay, that's it. So all I'm trying to say is there are these different wrinkles that can be put in, and we can protect family members. We can protect a spouse. We can do all kinds of stuff if that's what you want. So that's the immediate annuity, a pension. Next, let's go into a fixed annuity. It's also called a fixed deferred annuity. So we put 100 or 50 or 10,000 into this account, and it's going to pay interest. And let's just say that the interest rate is 5%. And if it's a five-year fixed annuity, it pays 5% for the next five years. What happens at the end of five years? Sometimes they're over with. Sometimes you can renew it. Sometimes it'll float and have a who knows what interest rate. But literally, normally they have a five-year guarantee or six or seven or eight or nine or ten on this, quote, fixed annuity. It just strictly pays an interest rate. Today, the going interest rate's around 3%. I mean, that's just what it is. Better than a bank, but nothing earth-shattering. And that interest rate can be fixed for a long period of time. Is there a negative with that? Yeah. Big negative is if you get 3% today and next year interest rates go to 4 and you're only sitting with 3 you might have think you made a bad decision. But that's a fixed. Now we're going to take a phone call first before I go in with the more of this diatribe because we solicited hard enough to get this guy to call who didn't call last week, and we used to consider him a friend. Do you remember that? Oh, he's still my friend. He's still a friend. Bulldog, it's Joe. You're on the radio, my man. Hey. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, I want to challenge Ellen Love to the mascot challenge. <laughs> the mascot challenge. I think I should be the mascot. You should be the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Alan, uh, we're playing phone tag. You can call me uh, anytime. Sorry I missed your call. All right, sir? Okay, Bulldogs. All right. Thank you, sir. And a uh, little more of housekeeping. Victoria? Hello, darling. Oh, Please call me just sometime just to pass the time. I'd love to hear what's going on in your world, and I'll tell you what's going on around here up in this area where you may want to, you know, you know, think about uh, a lot of land development and things like that. And uh, well, I thought maybe now, you were just going to say you're not in jail yet or something, you know, something more exciting. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I would have asked that of you, Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we got so many recorded shows, and then Alan calls me, and I'm going, well, he's dead or in jail. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say hi, guys. Hey, by the way, Joe, um, you know, the phrase that you said is that, you know, whatever you say is, you know, all that and the rage and whatever. But I have to say that in my lifetime, and I believe yours, uh, you can say whatever you want as long as you can back it up. Well, the, you know, back again, my, one of my favorite sayings is man is known by his words. That's why you, the more no, public... No, his deeds. Well, you know, that's... there's. Because My, you can change your p opinion along the you way, can and change. then your words. But would here's be what happens: is especially if you're documented, because you take public officials, mm. every word is scrutinized like crazy. Politicians like crazy. But if a doctor tells you you're going to die tomorrow, but you don't, you know, you're happy. But if he says you're going to die yesterday and you didn't, you're you're still happy. But if you point, says you're going to die, but you're next really <laughs> disappointed if he says you have six months and you only live for two weeks. There you go. That but happens I, a lot. Well, what's worse is that you've got six months to live, and then you live 20 more years, and you've blown everything because you think you're going to die. You're going to be gone. Well, Bulldog, you see, that's what happens. Then you move to Palm Coast, and you know, th then. then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I'll let you go. All right, my Good man, thanks for you, calling, Bulldog. Bulldog. Thanks. Three, yeah, uh, Alan, owe me a call. Three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety. Now Bulldog brought up the fact that there were a couple of recorded shows a couple of weeks ago because he called in. 
Oh. Um, may this may be a good time to tell the listeners to have. I'm not going to be here next week. Right <laughs> again? Again? Where are you going? Mini, mini season. lobster season. Oh, mini lobster mini <laughs> season. So we're going to go. Ha- you know, happy mini lobster season, everybody. Yeah, oh, and it. do you think we're going to get lobsters? Um, I always he do. will. You're yeah. not going to get any. I said well, we. we. I was going to say, are you going? We. Are you going to come down and die for lobsters? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> then you're not getting it. You know how many people I have standing in line wanting free lobsters? No, you got to come catch your own, right? That's it. Wow. You know, but it's I hate I get a kick out of this. I feel my, sorry my, for my them. My brother, we we he figured out one year. He says, you know, Joe, every lobster we get costs forty bucks. We can buy them at the store for ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one time you pay a hotel, yeah, gas, boat, sure. and all the rest. But of that. But you have to go. They call it a tickler, right? Where yeah. you go in well, there. That's how you and get, get them in the little holes they hide Aww. in. Well, the key is like my Eric and I both. You know, we're not. Is so he young. going with you? Oh yeah, we've been. He and we're we're saying, and his son's not going this year because. Because he has to work. Well, he's oh, much sure. younger, and he does most of the work. Now yeah. my brother and I are saying, you know, this is not a pretty now you picture. Gotta dive. No. How long can we hold our breath? You know? <laughs> anyway, back to fixed annuities. Fixed means they pay an interest rate, period. Okay? okay. Now, you can get a fixed annuity that pays interest rate for one year. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to reset next year. And you agree to that contract. Do you know what it's going to be? No. But they usually have a floor that it can't go less than the floor. So let's say it pays 3% this year, and it's one year. Mm-hmm. Okay? Or it pays 5 Sometimes they give you a bonus the first year, and they might give you an extra 1% or 2%. But then they have a 7-year or a 10-year cancellation penalty. So they get you into the beginning by paying you a bonus in the front. But on the other hand, next year the guarantee might be 2%, and you might only get 2 you don't know what you're going to get because the guarantee is the minimum. But the f- it is fixed and it pays an interest rate, period. Nothing but an p- interest rate. In the meantime, we're going to interrupt my diatribe here for another phone call. Mike, it's Joe Martek. You're on the radio. Hi, thanks so much. After the two years running of the Russian collusion delusion, <laughs> I wondered if there might be a... Uh, dance that you all could suggest that we could perform to it you know what i you know we're all on the same page mike this um the russian collusion delusion plus um the fbi people <laughs> saying we can't elect this guy of course you know we can, we know we can trust the fbi and the cia because that's our people right mm-hmm. well, <laughs> they were they were proven out with the big lie that led the bush you know mess in iraq so yep, yep. Mr. Trump is right on that, and as somebody that loves America, can you not be proud seeing him stand next to a powerful man like Putin and look so big, straight (laughs) up, and representing America so well? How can anyone that loves America not be proud? You know what gets me? Can you imagine how their liberals are ripping him apart? And I'm thinking... They, they just can't. They, they got can't. a memo that said that's their job. I guess that's what it is. And I was listening to uh, Meet the Press Sunday morning. I got to tell you, Chuck Todd was just dancing in the chair trying to find people to badmouth Trump. It was just pathetic. Mm-hmm. And here we have Mike, you and I are on the same page. Alan is, most of us in this group are. Life couldn't get too much better than it is now, and it is getting better. It certainly is. And my mark, since I talked to you all, I went out and bought a brand new Z Pro Kawasaki. Ooh. I wouldn't have done that three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you know, That's Mike, you know, right there is a saying out there. You know, there's no fool like an old fool. You know that. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's all right. I got a red Mustang convertible. I call it my male mental pause car. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a good one. I've never had a Mustang. Hey, I had to do it. You know, it's just one of those things. You know, when you, you, you may, you may start identifying with that when you get old. You know, you figure, you know, how much time do I have left? <laughs> and when he really wants to get wild, he puts the top down. Ooh, scary! <laughs> it's too hot now for that, yeah. though. <laughs> well, we'll learn later the benefits of this summit, and it'll involve Syria. There's going to be some great improvements. Mr. Trump always brings better and improvement but he'll never get a second of credit from anyone including a lot of republicans oh That's so man some of the republicans just re- i mean it's pathetic it's pathetic it is he doesn't have to apologize i want him only to realize all of us who supported him still do yep. not yep. one person has backed off yep 
Yep, and I, and I would assume and hope that he's picked up a few independents along the way. He's not going to get the screaming liberal. We both know that. But the yep. bottom line is um, I just can't envision anybody trying. You know, I love this. Well, yeah, well, things were starting to get better without him. Uh-huh. Okay, same old story. Nothing, nothing is new. They can't find anything positive to say. But, hey, Mike. Listen, we're all on the same page. If we could find a happy dance, you know, if you can figure out how to do it, we'll put it on the radio. <laughs> all right. I'll be listening. All Thanks. right, Mike. Thanks, Thanks for Mike. calling. Bye. I think we could do the rain dance. Yep. That would be a good one. 340-1590, 340-1590. Anyway, now I'm back. Where uh, was what I? Were you Fix- ta- I'm sorry. What were you talking about? Well, <laughs> Joe, I, I'm still confused. Uh, and here, here's well, you're old, you know that happens. Let's <laughs> uh, let's say you have the immediate annuity. You have you put in a hundred thousand dollars, right? And they're going to pay you say a uh, thousand a month. Let's just say a thousand a month, the rest of your life. So what what I'm saying that is a fixed sum that's never going to change. Never going right? to change, right? So how does that differ then from the fixed annuity? Well, one, you're taking an income, and you're in concrete. You can't stop it. You can't do anything. You're getting an income, period. Okay. And it's going to go on. Now we have a fixed deferred. I put this 100000 into the account. I don't have to take money out. I may be able to just take the interest out, but I have not set up a pension. I can cash it in. I see. I see what you're saying. Big okay. difference. Big difference. So I'm deferred. So. Me- so when when the thousand dollars a month is exhausted, then there's nothing else to take out on the. Here's what happens: the thousand dollars a month, if you get a life income, it's never exhausted oh. till you're dead. Even if even if you live more than. Uh, if you live to be 115 months. and you okay. and it it never okay. ends. It All never right. ends until you die. So that's the big difference. There, then. It's okay. a pension. Yeah. It's no okay. different than retiring from General Motors. I'm getting the finger from the producer yeah, saying the Jeff's on, on it. Jeff's well. I had I had this <laughs> attorney over here, this old guy picking on me, so I had to intercede. Hey Jeff, it's Joe Martek. You're on the radio. Hey Joe Martek, just got a quick question. Sure. If something were to happen to Trump, where he was to get voted out of office, do you think the stock market's going to maintain, or is it going to going to turn right back around? Because they're obviously going to undo everything he did. Here comes the ma- ma- major thing. If he gets voted out, that's another two two and a half years, right? So I am not even remotely concerned about him getting voted out or, or, or impeached or anything for the next two and a half years. I'm not even concerned about it. If he gets killed, Mike Pence takes over. Okay. Okay. I don't ha- I don't see a problem there. We're not going to have a guy as an aggressive as Trump, but the programs are set and in motion that he's accomplished in this short period of time. So I, I expect things to roll along. Now, yeah. I, f- I please Lord beg that our midterm elections, um, that he drains more of the swamp and, and tightens his base up so that he can continue to accomplish the things that we're all going to benefit from. Um, and well, I, the, yeah, the new thing with him, about, you know, him being friends with Putin, did I not, do I not remember Obama and Hillary Clinton selling Putin all of something out west, uh, our mineral values, and she stood there in front of the whole world representing Obama, pressing a red button saying, Yeah, reset button. We have reset. <laughs> we have new relations with these people, and we're going to have good relations with these people. And then, boy, oh boy, Trump goes over there to try to have good relationship with him. It's like, oh my God, you think he's, you know, he's got, they got something on Trump. Well, they got something on Hillary. Mike, yeah. nobody ever listen up. Or Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff, call me next week. Now, in fact, skip next week. I'm going to be lot diving for lobsters. But week after next, call back in and we'll continue on. We've got to leave. We're told to leave. Until next week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Bye, Jeff. Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Team Martech Hour. The Team Martech Hour is a paid program. The content was provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership were not responsible for its content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment 
advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Tune in again next Wednesday at 11.05 for the Team Martech Hour here on WPSL 1590. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast.